Hey everybody, we just uploaded this massive aircraft carrier model to RenderCrate, and while I was setting it up for you guys in Blender, I realized it would be the perfect project to demonstrate a few common texturing issues that you may come across when you're using Blender. Now really quick, if you don't care about learning about this stuff and you just want to get access to the model, everything I'm about to show you is already done for you. Just go to RenderCrate.com and download the Blender version of this model, and it's already set up. Okay, back to the tutorial. If you download and use a lot of third-party models online, you may find that sometimes the textures are hard to plug in or they don't really make sense. And I want to show you the three most common issues that people come across when you're using some third-party model that you may not understand. The first one is UDIMs and what they are and how to implement them. The second one is multiple UV sets. And then the third very common issue is when you get a model with the wrong kind of normal map. I want to show you how to recognize the problem and how to fix it. And if you're not using Blender or if you just want to follow along and learn how to do this process yourself, you can also download the FBX version of this model. It has all the raw files and you can follow along with me step by step in whatever program you're using. The concepts should be the same, but I'm going to use Blender today. So here I am in Blender, fresh new scene. Just going to delete all the stuff I don't need. And I'm going to go up to File, Import FBX, and I'll grab that Aircraft Carrier FBX. That's a pretty hefty model, so it may take a minute or two to load. Okay, so here's the model in Blender. And just to give you a quick tour of the project, if you look up here in the Outliner, you'll see that there are multiple objects associated with this aircraft carrier. There's decals, the deck, details, floor, hull, tower, and windows. So I'm actually going to click on the details object here and I'm going to introduce you to the first common texturing issue that people run into if they're not aware of this. So the details object actually uses something called UDIMs. If you open this up, you can see it actually has 12 UV sets. So what does that mean? Well, it means that all of these objects here have the same material, but if you look at the UV map, we can see that some of them are outside of that typical square where you want your UVs to reside. That's called a zero to one space. And it's just a way of getting extra resolution so we don't have to have a separate material for each of these minuscule objects. So if we look at the texture maps, we can see that there's details D, which is diffuse or color. And then there's a number, 1001, 1002, and so on. And what that does is it tells these textures which of these UV tiles to go to. So I'm gonna jump back into Blender and go to shading, and I'll click on details UV1 right here. So implementing UDIMs in Blender is super easy. It actually kind of does it automatically. So I'm gonna grab an image texture and plug it into base color. And for the vector, I'll just plug in a UV map. Let's go find our color map here. So I'm gonna look for the one called details, uh, the letter D, which stands for diffuse or color. And I'm gonna grab the first one, 1001, and I'll grab that. And you can see that Blender automatically recognizes that this is UDIM tiles. So it changes the mode right here from single image to UDIM tiles. And it imports all 12 of those textures just automatically. And I can see that all of the objects with the detail material now have color on them. Pretty awesome. So that was really easy. But if you see those numbers, that means that your material is set up with UDIMs. Let's continue to plug in our textures here. I'm just gonna duplicate these two nodes here and I'm going to import the next map. Now I'm looking for roughness and metallic and maps like that, but we can see that there's no roughness map for the details. Instead, we have one called AORM. And this is a very interesting map. It's called a packed map. And what it means is the roughness map, the metalness map, and in this case, the ambient occlusion map are all packed into a single image because those are all black and white textures. So you don't need full RGB color for each. You can actually pack each black and white map into one of the RGB channels. In this case, the red channel, the first one is the AO or ambient occlusion. The green channel is roughness and the blue channel is metalness. So back over in Blender, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna import the first one and we can see that it automatically recognizes that it's UDIM tiles. Now this is not a color map, so I'm gonna change the color space to non-color. And we have a problem. We can't grab the individual channels right away. I can't just plug this into roughness or metallic. So what we need to do is separate the channels. So I'm gonna search for a node called separate color. And now I can actually grab the green channel and plug it into roughness and the blue channel and plug it into metallic. And for this type of material, we actually don't need the ambient occlusion channel from red, so we can just leave that disconnected. Okay, and lastly, we need our normal map. So let's duplicate these nodes again. I'll clear this out, and I'll navigate back to our folder and grab the first normal map for the details material. So details, N for normal, 1001. And we can see once again, it recognizes UDIM tiles, 
I'm going to switch the color space to non-color, and then we can just plug this directly into the color channel of the normal map node right here. Now we do have a problem though. This normal map is set up for Unreal Engine, and Blender is expecting a different type of normal map from what Unreal Engine is expecting. Unreal Engine uses DirectX normal maps, and Blender uses OpenGL normal maps, and the only difference is the green channel is inverted. If you open it up in Photoshop and isolate the green channel, on a DirectX normal map, the light will look like it's coming from below. With an OpenGL normal map, the light will look like it's coming from up above. That's the only difference. So right now, since these textures are set up for Unreal Engine, the green channel is inverted. So back here in Blender, we need to invert that green channel to make it work. And here's how we do that. I'm gonna grab the color, and I'm gonna attach a separate XYZ, and then I'm gonna grab the X channel and search for Combine XYZ. So we're recombining the channels. I'm going to plug the X into X, the Z into Z, but we need to invert the Y channel before we can recombine it. So I'm going to grab here and I'm going to search for subtract. And by default, it's plugged into the top value. I actually want to plug it into the bottom value and I'll set the top value to one. So that's a cool little math trick for you. If you want to invert, you subtract one minus the thing you want to invert. So we've just inverted the green channel and I'll plug this back into the normal map. So now our normal map will be fixed and it will reflect the light accurately. Now let's talk about the other issue, and that's the issue of multiple UV sets. So if you click on the deck object and dig into the UVs for it, you may notice that it actually has two different UV layouts for the same object. So the same polygons are laid out in two different ways in UV space. And this is so that we can have kind of a custom painted texture showing all the scratch marks from the planes landing and taking off. And each part of the surface can have a different color or detail added to it to make it look like one big worn out used surface. And then the other UV layout for this object is the same thing, but just blown up really huge. And that's so that we can use this tiny little tiling asphalt texture so that when we zoom in, we can see very small details. So here's how we combine those in Blender. So I've selected my deck material. Let's go ahead and attach an image texture node to the base color channel. And for vector, I'm gonna attach UV map. Okay, I'm gonna go to open. And if we look at our texture list, I can see the deck material has deck asphalt D for diffuse, which is the color map. Remember that D stands for color or diffuse. But then we also have deck mat UV2 color. So we have two different color maps for this same object. I'm going to plug in the first one that says asphalt. If we zoom in really close, we can see that it looks like we have this tiling asphalt texture. You can see the little pebbles, the little gravelly bumpiness. So that looks perfect. But when we zoom out, the whole thing looks really flat. It doesn't really have much detail. We don't see all the cool scratches from the planes taking off and landing. And that's actually where the other UV set comes in. And really quick, if it doesn't look right, if it doesn't look like this on your screen, it might be because you accidentally plugged the asphalt texture into the wrong UV set. So here's how we switch that in Blender. On this UV map node, we can see here, little pull down menu has two different options. If I switch this to map two, we get a different result. We get the entire texture is kind of blown up over the entire surface, which isn't right. So I'll switch that back to map one. Okay, let's duplicate these nodes. And in the second one, I'll plug in that other texture, the one that's called deck mat UV two color D. And let's just replace it. I'm just gonna plug it into the base color and we can see we get kind of an ugly result. What we're seeing is the hand painted interesting texture tiling over the surface of the entire thing way too much. So for this one, we want to switch the map to map two. And now if we zoom out, we can see, okay, now we're getting that worn down hand painted look that we want, but we want to combine these together and plug them both into the base color channel. So I'm going to search for a new node under color, mix color. I'm going to plug the asphalt color into A and the other color into B and the result will go into base color. Now, if we zoom in, we should see that we have the custom painted texture, but when we get closer, we will see the asphalt detail. Now on the mix node, the factor, I left it at 50%, but you can adjust this as needed. You can blend closer to one color or the other, depending on your preference. So that's how it works with multiple UV sets. Let's go ahead and plug in the rest of the textures for this material. So I'm gonna duplicate this color node. And now I'm going to search for the deck material, asphalt, occlusion, roughness, metallic. Now, if we look up here back at the color, we can see that the asphalt is supposed to be set to map one. So I'm going to set this back to map one. And if you remember from the previous example, we need to separate the color channels because this is the packed map. So I'm going to separate out color. I'm going to duplicate this texture and UV node again and navigate back to my textures. And I can see for the deck mat, UV2 has a roughness channel that we need to blend in. So let's grab that. 
and we need to set this to map number two. So we know the metallic channel is in blue and that doesn't blend with anything, so I'll just plug it straight into the metallic. And the green channel right here is roughness, which needs to blend with this texture. So I'm gonna search for color, mix color, and I'll plug these in and then plug the result into the roughness channel. All right, very cool. And lastly, for this material, we need to plug in our normal map. So once again, I'll duplicate this and I'll navigate back to our textures. And I can see that the deck material has only one normal map and it's for the asphalt, that tiny repeating texture. So I'll plug that in. And again, if we scroll way back up to the top, we can see that the asphalt color is using map number one. And so we need to do the same thing for the normal map for the asphalt. Now, once again, remember from our previous example that this map is the wrong kind of normal map. So I'm going to separate out the colors and we're going to recombine this back together. But first we need to invert the Y channel, which is the green channel of the texture. And then I'll plug this vector into the color here. I'm also going to clean up my spaghetti here because I always end up with sloppy spaghetti whenever I'm working with nodes. And that's how most of these materials work. But there's one last example I want to show you, and that's in the tower material. So let's go ahead and click on that. So if we look at our texture list for the towers right here, we can see there's one here called UV2 mask. Let me show you what that's for. So I'm going to start by building out the base color network, just like we did before. I'm going to grab an image texture and then in vector, I will search for a UV map node. And let's plug in our texture. So I'm looking for the one called T Tower D for diffuse. Okay, looking good. Let's duplicate this. And I'm gonna plug in the other color map for the tower. T Tower UV 2 D. So this is the diffuse map for the other UV set. I'm gonna set this to map one and I'll set this one to map two. So just like in the last example, I'm gonna search for a mix color node under the color category. And I'll plug this into A and B, just like before. But instead of having a factor of 0.5 to blend these two colors 50-50, I'm gonna plug the mask into the factor. So let's actually duplicate these texture nodes one more time. It's getting kind of crowded, but don't worry, we're gonna clean up the spaghetti. And I'll search for T Tower UV2 mask. I'm gonna set this color space to non-color because it's not a color, it's a mask. I set it to UV2 and plug this into the factor. And then we'll plug the result into base color. Now keep in mind, if you're not getting the result you're expecting, that it matters which order you plug this in. So if it's not looking right, try switching the inputs here on the mix node. Okay, and that's basically it. That's all the examples of all the unusual issues you might run into while setting up the textures for this object. Now it's not very common that you'll run into all three of these issues when you're plugging in textures for a third party model which is why I thought that this model of the aircraft carrier was the perfect project to demonstrate these common texturing and shading issues. Now, once again, if you're a Blender user and you don't want to deal with any of that stuff, remember that you can go up to rendercrate.com. And if you're a pro member, you can just download this Blender scene. It's already set up for you. But if you're not a Blender user, we have the FBX version and all the raw textures for you to set up in your own programs. If you make any cool VFX shots with this aircraft carrier model, be sure to tag us on Instagram with it or share it on our Discord. All right, later, creators.